In the last few sessions, we distinguished the two different types of motion. One type of motion we called constant velocity. And that meant that the velocity does not change. That's what it means for an object to travel with constant velocity. Now, the other type of motion we talked about was constant, sometimes called uniform acceleration. And what I'd like to do in this video is to look at the graphical distinctions between the two um, distinct type of motions. That way we can kind of clarify any ambiguity that still remains. So if I were to look at the, in this first case, distance versus time graph, and I'll write it as d of t to indicate that it is a um, distance is a function of time versus time for each one of these cases. And this could be distance in the x direction, or it could be distance in the y direction and versus time. I want to take a first look at this distinction. So for an object moving with constant velocity, what's, what you should see, it increase at a constant rate. So if this is my time equals one second, two seconds, and three seconds, now what you should see is, as you go up from the time axis and interstack with the distance versus time curve and go over to the distance axis, you'll be moving equal distances in equal amounts of time. That's one of the ways you can distinguish constant velocity motion. You move equal distances in equal amounts of time. You know, depending on how accurately I do this, but what you should see is that the displacement vector, the vector that indicates how far you move in a specific instance of time, should all be the same length for an object traveling at constant velocity. And I kind of drew it relatively accurately there. You, know, you can kind of see that all of these vectors are about the same length. And the only limitation is how accurately I can actually represent them. Now, one last thing, we call this a nice linear relationship. All right, that meant that the velocity increases at a constant rate or the distance traveled each interval of time is going to be constant. You travel equal distances in equal amounts of time. Now for an object that's accelerating, there was this nice quadratic relationship. And what that was indicating is during each, say, one second interval of time, in this particular case, you will be moving increasingly farther away from the observer. Now that's for this one particular case, but there are cases in which the distance traveled each instance of time is decreasing because the velocity is also decreasing. But I didn't draw that one for this one. Now if I go up from the time axis, intersect with the distance versus time curve, and then over to the distance axis, what you should see is that the displacement vector will get farther and farther and farther, or larger and larger and larger. And that's going to just indicate that the distance traveled each interval of time for an object that's accelerating is getting greater and greater and greater. And in this case, this worked out very nicely. You can see that with each instance of time, the displacement vector is getting larger and larger in larger. Now for an object that's slowing down, what you would see is that these displacement get vectors get smaller and smaller and smaller. Now if we were to look at a velocity versus time graph for each of these two distinct types of motion, which I'll write as v of t, to indicate the velocity is a function of time in time on this axis, again for both of these. For an object that's traveling with constant velocity, what you'll see is that my velocity line will be a nice straight horizontal line. So like, let's say this is our initial time and this is our final time. And I go up from the time axis to the velocity versus time curve. What you should see is that if this is my initial velocity given by my initial time, and this is my final time, and this is my final velocity, that the velocity between these two points is the same. Now what that indicates is if these two velocities are the same, the change in velocity per change in time, and it doesn't matter the time that it takes to change this velocity because the velocity changes zero, will be zero meters per second squared. All right, and what that's going to tell us is that the acceleration is zero. The change in velocity per change in time is zero. The velocity remains the same, and so the acceleration is zero. So at any point in time, this velocity will be the same. Now if I look at a velocity versus time graph for an object that's accelerating, I'll see a nice linear relationship. And that means that the velocity changes at a constant rate. So if this is one second of time, two seconds of time, three seconds of time, if I go up from the time axis, intersect with the velocity versus time curve, and go over to the velocity axis, and it 
what I should see is that I'm my velocity vectors would be the same in each case because my velocity is increasing at a constant rate. So depending on how accurately I drew this one, this velocity vector should be the same length in all three cases, and it relatively is, uh, given my limited artistic abilities. But this is a nice linear relationship for a velocity versus time graph for something the velocity is increasing at the exact same rate during each interval of time. And now let's just clear up some room on the workspace and take a look at what it means for an object to be accelerating during this period of time. So if I draw an acceleration versus time graph for each of these distinct types of motion, what I should see for an object that's traveling with constant velocity, any object traveling with constant velocity, the, velo the acceleration versus time graph will be right along the time axis because at any single moment in time, the acceleration will be zero. So acceleration equals zero meters per second. The velocity in this case is not changing. So the velocity remains the same because it's not accelerating. Now if I were to look at an acceleration versus time graph for an object traveling with, I drew it in this particular case, is I would have a nice straight horizontal line so that any moment in time, say this is my t initial and this is my t final, I should, when I go up from my time axis, what I should see is that at any point in time my acceleration is the same. So in this case my acceleration is constant. All right, my acceleration doesn't change. That's what it, that's what it means by constant acceleration. Now, there, there are types of motion in which the acceleration does change, but those are not the type of motions that we will be analyzing during this uh, course.